und herzlich willkommen zu It's Funk. Ich bin Isa und ich habe heute einen ganz besonderen Gast und zwar Mona Höfring. Mona Höfring ist eine norwegische Autorin. Sie hat auch schon zwei Bücher auf Deutsch rausgebracht. Was helfen könnte, habe ich euch ja schon vorgestellt. Und ähm, bei Venus bei meiner Geburt ein Alpenpfeilchen streifte, habe ich euch noch nicht vorgestellt, aber das habe ich eben auch schon gelesen und um diese beiden Bücher geht es heute auch schon ein bisschen. Aber Norwegen ist eben auch das Gastland der Frankfurter Buchmesse in diesem Jahr und deshalb habe ich Mona Höfring eben auch hier neben mir sitzen. Das Interview, was wir jetzt führen, wird auf Englisch sein, ich werde euch aber Untertitel einblenden. Aber ja, wir werden jetzt erstmal anfangen und ich wünsche euch ganz viel Spaß mit dem Video. So, hello Mona. Thanks for having me here in your room. Yeah. Hope you have a nice time so far in Frankfurt. Yeah, I did. Uh, it's uh, like being not only in another country now, yes. but uh, at another planet. <laughs> <laughs> Because so much are, uh, is happening. Yeah. And um, for me, normally I will uh, live a more quiet life. Okay. But these days are kind of... Uh, more uh, busy and yes. things are happening and it's good things to yesterday i was in a book store yes. reading mm -hmm. and it was lovely meeting the audience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i like to to stay here mm -hmm. nice so um i've read your two books which i have already introduced and um Yes, yeah, so um, now let's talk about them and also about Norway as the guest of honor. And my first question is that you do have your origins into poetry. How does this impact the fiction you are writing? Uh, the poetry compared to the fiction? Yes. Yeah. In my poetry, I try to uh, um, have fiction and stories, so it's like short stories mm -hmm. in a way, the poems. Yes. And in the fiction, I do the poetry parts uh, by telling a larger story, but still they are a little bit uh, in family. Yes. These two, for me. Yes, and I yeah. think when you're reading the books, you really recognize that because the choice of words is so sharp. So it's exactly what it should be. And I think when you read it carefully, you really recognize that. And I think that's a really nice thing about your books and also a thing why everyone should read them. <laughs> <laughs> so both of those stories are in some way a coming of age story, but different to the normal coming of age story. Mm -hmm. Is that a topic which is important to you? Yeah, I think about them as portraits of young women, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's correct, it's not that coming of age actually. Yes. Uh, and it's, um, yeah, it's important for me to tell stories about some girls that uh, comes to me in a way. Uh, I have their names mm -hmm. and I'm getting interesting, interested uh, in them uh, by just having a name. So in this book it's Ella and Marta in this and uh, in this book it's Laura. Yes. And um, then I open up and uh, see what is it about this person called Laura and Ella and Marta and then I start to write and They show up in a way. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And is there an aspect in your own personality which you try to transfer to your characters? Or is there something you have transferred to those three women? Yeah, I, th I think I can uh, recognize many things f from my own. Uh, uh, own life in a way, my own insecurity when I grew up still now and as a human being um, uh, um, being in this world 
trying to find meaning, uh, being a little bit wild, being a little bit insecure, being very strong, being very fragile, all these things at once and mm. then uh, trying to, to find out what is this I'm yes. doing and how can I manage to be here and have a kind of um, not maybe quiet life because they are not living a quiet mm -hmm. life and neither do I in <laughs> a way. But I'm trying to find some co comfort for them, mm -hmm. to uh, to give them places to be in that are good for them. So sometimes I take my protagonists, so whatever you would call them, uh, um, Cinderellas in a way, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I take them from one spot where they are not so, uh, where they are feeling maybe a little bit not so free uh, mm -hmm. or families maybe they want to come um, go further and I give them a new place to go. Mm -hmm. So I take them on a trip for instance and I give them uh, uh, in Vassel von Kante, Kante, you said yes, that? Yeah. Uh, um, I, I give um, give her a, a way. Uh, she, uh, she is going away in mm. the in the end of the book yes. to do something else. And here I am giving the two sisters Ella and Marta a place to go to a hotel mm -hmm. far up in the mountains. And then uh, I uh, I thought it was interesting to see taking them from the family home, the family house, and high up on the, in the mountains. Yes. Will they change? Will mm -hmm. they be different? Will they um, feel um, better? Will they, um, will they still be uh, unhappy? Or um, uh, will the breakdown still mm -hmm. follow them? And uh, will they get healthier? Uh, yeah. Who will they meet? Yes. Yeah. I think that's also a really interesting thing about this book, ex especially, but also in the other, that in some way you isolate the characters mm. Mm. just for them to unfold. And mm. of course, sometimes they still have their frontiers in their brains, so they still know how they will act in normal life. However, mm -hmm. now they are in a completely new environment, mm -hmm. and that's what I also liked a lot. Yeah, that's good. Uh -huh. Yes. So, let's come back to Norway as the guest of honor. Mm -hmm. And so my first question is, of course, it's, it's maybe really exciting to be in a country where Norway is the guest of honor and where you get all this attention due yeah. to that. Yeah. And how does it feel? Well, uh, for me it has been very special because my, my publisher's house here in Germany, mm -hmm. Edition Film, they ha had published two books this year yes so uh, so for me they have given me this mm -hmm. and if not I wouldn't be here so and I I think it maybe it's about 500 books uh, being translated to German mm -hmm. this year uh, because of this happening and this is wonderful yes so so it's um, uh, yeah I hope um, uh, Norwegians will find uh, German writers to read uh, during these mm -hmm. days and uh, this, um, what do you call it, exchange? Yes. yes. I think it's a very, very special and good thing that's yes. uh, happening. Uh, and uh, mm, it's so many things to say that uh, my head is almost like this. I, I can't say it <laughs> because it's too much. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's very... Mm, uh, it wouldn't have happened if Nola and all these people, did, if they didn't go together and do such uh, a, a lot of work, mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, then um, the German readers wouldn't have these 500 books, uh, yes. maybe 50, maybe 20, I don't mm -hmm. know what's normal uh, another year, but... Uh, this will um, be interesting for many years, yes. I think. I hope so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's also quite nice to go on a discovery. Every year there's a new guest of honor. Yeah. And yeah. oftentimes there are countries 
which have really interesting literature as yeah. Norway for yeah. example yeah. and you don't know it because mm -hmm. it's not that present but with the guest of honor everybody knows about yeah. it and yeah. I hope a lot that many many people get fans of these books because mm -hmm. One, they are really beautiful, and two, they are also really beautiful inside. So, yes, um, is there an aspect of your characters which is typically Norwegian? No. Okay. <laughs> so, maybe no. that's also an interesting thing about the books. Um, they are all finding their place in Norway. However, I think they could take place anywhere in the world. Yeah. And that's also something really special. So, mm -hmm. of course, I started reading Norwegian literature to get to know something about the country. So here I didn't really get it. However, the books are so beautiful and the language is so nice also in the German translation. Um, yes, that I would really recommend it. And yes, I think now we are at the end. So maybe one final question is, if we can hope for some further German translations, if you are allowed to talk about that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm allowed to do whatever, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Ah. So uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, uh, for sure, uh, this cooperation with the uh, Ebba Dolzagen, who uh, uh, translated mm -hmm. it, uh, so beautifully and and uh, the people in Edition Film we we will have uh, contact further on and I don't know normally they only um, publish one book or one author mm -hmm. and that's it and uh, uh, this time they made um, um, what do you call it um, so something special and they take took two yes. books so uh, they have to answer mm -hmm. it. I don't know. I would be happy if it happened. And if not, that's life. Yeah. So yeah, but um, I have another book about um, a girl called Olivia and uh, she is going to uh, Iceland and it's called The Waiting Room in the Atlantic Ocean. So it's a novel as well. So mm -hmm. it's a Norwegian and it's in French. Oh, yes. Okay. So, uh, and in Danish. Okay. Yes. So, maybe in German mm -hmm. one day. I hope so. I'd be really <laughs> happy to. Mm -hmm. So, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for doing the interview with me. It was a really nice time with you. It was really nice to get and in, look into your work. And yes, thanks a lot. I hope you have quite some fun at the book fair. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, so. Ich hoffe, euch hat das Video gefallen. Ich hoffe, ihr hattet auch eine tolle Zeit mit Mona Höfring. Und ja, nun geht es wieder zurück zur Messe für mich. Und wenn euch das Video gefallen hat, gebt mir doch sehr gerne einen Daumen nach oben. Ihr könnt auch gerne unten in den Kommentaren euren Senf dazu geben. Und ansonsten wünsche ich euch wie immer einen wunderschönen Tag und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!